Yeah. Hey, Grandpa. Yeah. What's your earliest memory in in life? Since when we were living at Stokesbury. Yeah. Why? Why? It just picked it up, you mean? Hello. Uh, hi, you, Donna. No, I haven't seen him this evening. If you have arthritis pain that lasts all day, presenting... Oh, <laughs> one of those. I see. I don't know. She didn't say. I didn't ask her. Grandpa, you mean you don't remember Ellis Island? Nope. I was too young. You don't remember riding the boat? No. Too young. So you just remember playing around the um, coal camp? Yeah. Were you just, did you live in the foreign section? Uh, I don't, we just... I don't need a camera now. I mean, the battery. You don't need a battery? How you now? live, because I plugged it in the wall. And you lived in a boarding house in Stokesbury with Paisani? Yep, right. You mean you only hung around Italian people until you were older? Well, I was just four years old. How old were you when you started to speak English? About six, when I started school. When I was six years old. You had to go to school? You mean on the first day of school you didn't hardly know any English? I didn't know any English. Do you remember that day? No, not too well. <laughs> Just vaguely? Vaguely. But the, I learned English pretty fast. But there was probably a lot of other people out there the same way, weren't there, in the Gulf? No, I'm not believe that. I went to uh, uh, what's the school? Uh, Central School. I went to Central School in grade school. Where was that? Uptown, you mean? Yeah. Oh, when you lived on Clyde Street. Yeah, right. And we went to Central School. Had you been in the coal camps, there'd have been a lot of foreign people like you. Yeah. Well, they were mostly all foreign. And then when we moved over to Temple Street, then I went to Lincoln School. And then back to junior high. And then back to junior high. And Trap Hill was, and then you left in the tenth grade. Right. And were you a basketball player? I played the junior varsity. Remember the old days when you could come up and turn it down? When you had to get out of your chair. Yeah, when you had to get out. I still do it. <laughs> like, and anyway, when you went to school and didn't speak English, the Mitakani didn't weren't mean about it, were they? I don't think so. I don't remember it that well. People got along better. Well, yes, they did to a point, especially in school kids. How 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 uh, little money did you guys have? Very little. But you always about ten cents a week allowance. Really, that was just enough for what a candy bar. Well, I know that was enough for all week. Did you go to the movies on 10 cents? Uh, yeah, movies were a dime. <laughs> well, and that was, um, what's that guy's um, cowboy's name from the 20s? Hoot Gibson. Tom Max. Hoot Gibson. Hoot Gibson. <laughs> Buck Jones. <laughs> you, went, you and Demi would go? Yeah, Demi and I would go. Lyric Theater? Uh, no, Palace. Where was that? Where the town cinema's at, on uh, North North Street. Oh, did the... That's the old Palace Theater. Did the Tissoni set and have set in the balcony? Yeah. yeah. See, it, that was the only theater in town at that time. That was Dayton Mattis' grandfather that opened yeah, the Lyric. Then they opened the Lyric, and then they built the uh, Beckley Theater. Well, I remember yeah. that one. Well, was Demi your best friend? Yes, uh-huh. Was he a Brutzi? Yeah, Brutzi is. What did, and what did you guys do for fun since you didn't have any money? Well, we went swimming and we <laughs> went to the pool room and... <laughs> you went swimming in a, in a pool or a creek? In the creek. With, and I bet you didn't have swimming trunks either. No. You just had your skin? Right. What, did any girls ever sneak up on you? Once in a while. How'd you hide from them? Uh, we'd stay in the water. <laughs> and, uh, what else was for fun? 
We like marbles? We, marbles, and we delivered papers. We sold newspapers and hauled sawdust to the meat markets. Where did you go down to Means Lumber? No, Baker Lumber. Where was that? On Piney Avenue. Where Dick Pyre's construction's at. That's what I was meaning. That's what that's Means Lumber nowadays back there, isn't it? No, Means Lumber's on up the road. Oh. Well. And so you just got got out of school, and instead of going home, you just ran around and just. No, we went home because we had <laughs> we had work to do. Didn't you, uh, did you and Uncle Louie, Uncle Joe, ever run around together? Yeah, Uncle Louie and Uncle Joe was a little bit too young. How how many how old how many years difference between you and Uncle Louie? Four. Oh well, so if you were fourteen, he was ten. You guys could. have play together. Yeah. Yeah, we ride around here. Were all the kids back then smoking cigarettes already when they were like 10? Probably most of them. And they rolled their own? Uh, yeah. yeah. Boy, that 10 cents a week went a long ways because you had well, got to see a movie. And, 10 cents a week. <laughs> by then you had a bunch of hustles like sawdust and stuff. Right, right. And then we sold newspapers. So Christmas trees. Where'd you get them? Over on the bypass. Well, that was the that was pretty rural then. That wasn't all built that up. Was completely on. rural then. Well, there was the bypass. What didn't exist then, did it? Yeah. Was it just a little red dog road? No, no. It was in 1933 is when they built the uh, concreted the bypass. And that was US 19. Yeah. But did nobody lived around the the uh, huh? No. There was no businesses. There was only one business on it, the Pulley Bone. Where, where was that? We have a, in fact, we got a picture of it. What about the Capri? Oh, that's, that's on this end. I'm talking about the other end. You're talking about up here around Patriot Ford? Yeah, from Patriot Ford on out. But out there, the Capri was, was that at, called Atkinsville? Yeah, yeah. Where was he from? Who, Atkins? No, the guy named Capri. What was their name? Oh, uh, Mazella. Were they Sicilian? Sicilian. Didn't he go, um, he wanted you to come back in the kitchen? And yeah. Yeah, he'd pour us wine during the war. <laughs> he wanted you to come back and have vino rosa with him? Right. Gosh, how many Italian people were in Beckley back then? Quite a few. Quite a few uh, at that time. What was that Italian American club like? Did you ever go in there? Well, I was in there once or twice. Oh. Not during the war. See, that right after the war, it, it broke up. What about Albany's store? Yeah, I was there. In fact, we have a picture of Albany's store. Did you see it in that paper? Uh huh. I think it's a picture of it in that newspaper that that we gave you. Well, did they have like cans of caponata for sale and the um, those um, provolone in shaped like pigs and stuff no, or balls? You couldn't see that. But, uh, stuff that, that you couldn't get up at other places. Right, you had all Italian stuff. And then now there's not so many Italian people in Beckley. They don't have to have that anymore, I guess. And Walmart has prosciutto anyway now. Yeah, Walmart's got prosciutto and hot ham. And Did your mom make make all Italian food when you were a kid? Yeah. Polenta and what else? Polenta and risotto. And risotto. Okay, so you talked about it. And your dad made his own salami. Yeah. Did you Did you help him? Yeah. Well, I want you to tell the camera about um, you and your dad making vino. And we had to stomp the grapes with our feet. You bought the, you bought the grapes um, with a bunch of other people went in together. Right, and they were all California grapes. And Nick Rizzi used to order a whole car load. Is he came to Giuseppe Rizzi. I his grandfather. Oh. And. Uh, he used to get them, order them for all the Italians, and get a car load, and then they'd, they'd divide whoever wanted to 
what they order, they use it. And you, what'd you put in a wooden tub? Yeah, we had wooden barrels. See, Coca-Cola used to get their syrup in the wooden barrels. Oh. Thing. And that's what the barrels that they used to make the wine. Was that, were they up on South Oakwood then? Cocoa? Yeah, yeah. And your dad would go up and buy them after they were done? We'd buy them. You'd buy the barrels. Oh. And they sold the barrels. They charged you? Yep. And they used the barrels in the, for the make the, well, make the wine. What did you cut? Did you cut it in half so that you could get in? No, no. You mean it was about that high and you got down in that thing? No, we didn't stomp the grapes in there. Oh. We stomped the grapes in the tub and then poured them into the barrel. Oh, and then did you let it age? Yeah, let it ferment. How long did it take? Uh, that I don't remember. Did it get toe, toe crusty in the wine? No. <laughs> I guess you had to wash up. Yeah, you had to wash your feet real good. Well, how strong was this wine? Pretty strong. I'd say about 15, 15%. Yeah. 12, 15%. Did you guys drink it with a regular meal? Yeah. Just like dinner? Just like we, we drink Coca Cola tonight? Right. You drink wine at the table. And he was and he was the cutting stone at that time, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, I wonder if he ever built a Coke oven. I don't know. What did he build around he built town? Built walls, buildings. They built a courthouse. A courthouse and uh, St. Francis Church. Little Beaver Dam, did he work Little on it? Beaver. Oh, he worked on the church we have now? That was the last job he did, was on the Catholic Church. Yeah, because that was, what, 1949? Yeah, 49 or 50. So he was getting old. Probably one of the last things he really built was this house that he helped you on, wasn't it? Yeah, this was probably about to... He did a few odd jobs after that, but not nothing. But your mom was just a housewife? Yeah, she, she stayed in the house. Was she a t traditional European peasant woman that wore those, what are those things they wore over their heads? Babushka, or whatever you call them. This stuff, and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Did she make her own butter and stuff? Yep, sure did. We had a cow and we had it raised a hog. Right there on Clyde Street in town? Oh yeah, back then. That'd be a Temple Street too. That'd be a spectacle today though to have a, a hog right in the middle of town. Yeah. Well anyway, <laughs> When you made this um so you made just had a lot of your own food, you made it and you raised it there in the house? Yeah. So yeah. when you you didn't go out and buy sausage so much as you butchered your own hog, and then all you had to buy was the black pepper. Yeah, right. And the and fennel. Salt and pepper. And the uh, fennel. We probably didn't use fennel. We used gar some garlic, I guess. Well, you probably raised that then. Yeah. Gosh, you didn't have to go to the supermarket for that much then, did you? Just sugar and... Sugar and... Sugar and flour and butter. But she, but, Not so much butter. To later years. Uncle Man said they used to sell the buttermilk in Winding Gulf to the Tatsuni, you know, for raise a little money. Yeah, right. Keep the butter and sell the buttermilk. And then they used to have, then they had the butter molds and they had those different shapes on them yeah. for decorative purposes. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe you didn't have any money, but you were having fun. Right. Yeah, we had, always had a lot of fun. On the weekend, Saturdays, is that when you and Demi ran around the woods? You yeah, well, not during the week. In the summer. Where's Chris? He's right here. Did you hear why? <laughs> I don't want you to take me. <laughs> what she think that's? I'm going to go and play that for that. How, how old were you when you went to Pittsburgh? 16. Almost 17. Why'd you put go to Pittsburgh of all places? Well, I knew some people there. Paisani? Paisani, yeah. Delamias? Yeah, right. Martinez. Oh, people from Q's of Forte. Right. And, the, and you got a job right away? Well, after a couple of weeks. Because the jobs were scarce? It was at 1936, 37? Well, it was about 36. 
And 35 or 36. How hard was 36, it? 36, I guess. How hard was it to get a job in 36? And it was real hard. It was real hard, especially in Pittsburgh. So the steel mills and they, they had it. It was rough, rougher than they did in West Virginia. But did you try to get a job with the steel mills? No, no, I didn't try. You just weren't interested in that? Or you knew everybody, everybody else was probably trying that? Yeah, that's what most of those people did. Well, what'd you do? I sold magazines. Which one? Well, that time it was, I forget the name of it, it was just a little paper thing. It was a dollar a year. You went door to door? Yeah, door to door. Then, then, I, uh, then I sold on national magazines, McCall's and Red Book, Good Housekeeping, and then did you move out from Python and get to you an apartment? Yeah, oh yeah. I had an apartment before when I got to the job. Was it in an ethnic neighborhood? No. Mm -mm. Just just in Pittsburgh. And so you just you worked in the day and at night you did you be went out and met people and dated girls and stuff down downtown Pittsburgh? Not too much. <laughs> too tired. Is that where I get quiet living from? I get it from you. Right, right. What was it? Wasn't it um, smoky up there with all the steel mills back yeah, then? Yeah, it was smoky. How smoky was it? It was pretty smoky. You lay it your shirt across the chair, and the next morning it'd be covered with soot. Even inside? Inside, yeah. Well, I saw, I was reading that the street lights came on in the middle of the day. Right. At, at noon, a lot of times, the street lights would be on. Did it stink and everything? Well, some days it did. But everybody was just glad to be making money? Right. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to... I guess they'd rather have smog and money than clean air but be starving to death? Was that how they felt? Right. <coughs> and then you did... When did you come back to West Virginia? After the war. So you were gone 10 years from Beckley? About 10 years, yeah. And you were... Did you get a draft notice while you were up there? Yes, I did. In 43. Were you expecting it though? No. You thought you were going to get out of it? Well, I didn't know. They just never called me. Where was, where was Basic? In Abilene, Texas. Camp Berkeley. I wonder if it's the same then as it is now, same no. basic training. No, I'm different. Is it harder now or then? No, it's easier now. Isn't everything? <laughs> right, everything's easier. What if, what if I, what if somebody told you in 1939 that one day people would be having uh, hand transplants and cloning sheep and stuff in your lifetime? Would you say I, you didn't know, that, you didn't really believe that? Right, I wouldn't have believed it. Did you know about television then, though? Because they had... No. In New York City, they had a few experimental televisions in the 30s. We saw the experimental television in 1946 when we went on our honeymoon. You and Nana? Yeah, at NBC. Oh, you went by NBC Studios? We were in the NBC Studios. Did you see any stars? No. Well, no. Not really. But in Pittsburgh in the early 40s was... Didn't you see all the big name bands? We saw all the big name bands. They used to stay a week at the theaters. But if I had to surmise, if I had to guess, I'd say that you weren't out there jitterbugging, that you were just kind of sitting with a bunch of guys on the side smoking and listening to the music. Right. <laughs> I just can't see you jitterbugging that much, no matter how much home brew you consume. No. Did people make home homemade beer? Yeah, they did. And so then you you came back from New Guinea and what did you go through San Francisco? Yep, San Francisco to Black Blackstone, Virginia. And you came back and what did you work? Smokehouse? Sportsman. And then, how did you know you knew the Verduces? Uh, yes, uh huh. And they're just friends with them? What, one of their sons? One yeah. of Aunt Connie's brothers? Connie's brothers, yeah. We were in school together. Were you, and so they just invited you to that wedding, and that's where you met Nana? I was an usher to his wedding. 
That's what I did last Saturday. Right, that's what you did. And I, uh, and you, uh, and you, uh, saw Nana there, and would you dance with her at the reception? Uh, yes, uh-huh. Let's see, that was probably March of 46, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe, no. Because you got, well, you got married in September? No, this was on uh, Valentine's Day. February 46. February of 46. That's you courted about six months. Yeah, we got married in September. And that, and then you went to New York, and then you came back to that little house on Porter. On Porter Street. I better get we didn't a picture. Live there very long. We moved to South Oakwood Avenue. Did you live with, uh, rent from my Uncle Pat? Uncle Pat, he had an apartment in his house. How long were you there? Oh, just a while. Then you went to Pemberton? Pemberton. Then you had to ride that bus into town every morning, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I guess you were making better money then and you thought enough would live with people. So you got built this place, right? Right. You went from Pemberton to here? Yeah. And then you never moved again and I doubt you ever will. Yeah, right. I doubt if I ever will either. And, and so... Uh, what else? You know what? Yeah, I lay there falling asleep at night, and I think I need to ask no one no that. A while I, then I got you here, finally, and I'm filming you, and I don't work, and I demand to call you. You forgot what you're gonna ask me? Is that how you say? I forgot yeah, demand to call you. Oh, it's like to ask you about back in the twenties and. Talk about that guy, Tony Stafford, that you knew. Did you know much about that guy? Well, I didn't know him, but we ran around with his son. We knew his daughter. He got deported, though. Yeah, I know he got deported, but uh, I don't, we, we didn't know him at all. Oh, you just knew his... We knew his family. Cause they lived on Clyde Street, too. Did you live in Leicester? Did you live along the tracks? Yeah, between the tracks. Between the C and O and the Virginia? Virginia, yeah. How'd you sleep at night? Well, they didn't run trains at night that much. The C and O didn't hardly run trains up there at all. That was the main line of the Virginia. The main line of Virginia, but they didn't run too many trains at night. You got used to it. I guess you just, well, it's just better than being homeless. You just try to have a look at things that way, didn't you? Yeah. But when you said, and then uh, you guys uh, jumped the train for a ride? Yeah. What'd you stand above Jenny Gap Tunnel? Go up to Jenny Gap Tunnel and... When it came through? No, we walked through the tunnel to the other side. Because it was downhill on this side. Uphill on the other side. And so, Green. would you just jump in a, a hopper car full of coal? Yeah. I bet that wasn't a dirty experience. Yeah, well, yeah, but we didn't care. Was there other people jumping with you? Oh, yeah, everybody. Everybody <laughs> liked to do that. Did you just do it for fun more than anything else? Yeah. Then we rode the surveyor, and when the train stopped for water, at the water tank and surveyor, we'd get off and walk back up the tracks to Leicester. Oh, so you just did it for a ride. You, weren't, yeah. you didn't really have to go anywhere. No, uh-uh. And it was a steam train? Yeah, steam engine. That's why they had to get. I think the C and O landed its last steam, last steam train, 1957, yeah. and the Virginian. I don't know, but I think they were about the same time. About the same time they, they stopped. Went that. to diesel electrics. Went to the diesels. Did you and Nana ride the train to New York yep. on a honeymoon? Mm -hmm. Do you think was it fun to ride the train? Oh yeah, everybody rode the train then. Did you sleep on a train? Yeah. I don't know if I could fall asleep on a train. Oh, yeah. That clickety-clack, clickety-clack, you know, you fall asleep. Did you crawl up there? Had to crawl up in a little thing? Well, we didn't use a... We slept in the seats. We didn't have a sleeper. Well, was that what they call first class? Well, no, that was a sleeper. Yeah, that was just another motor... You had to motor. get a sleeping car. You had to get a... But the regular uh, train, you just slept in the seats. Did you just lay your head back like this? Yeah. Oh. Like, like in an airplane. 
Well, I never took you. All I ever do is, is drive myself. <laughs> See that? The, and the, I bet hardly anybody my age is taking the train. But well, I bet be it's surprised fun. how many people ride the train. When we went to Wyoming, that train was full from Chicago. When did you? When you went to Uncle Michael? When we went to Uncle Michael's. Oh, I'd like to take the train. And that they had those double decker cars going west from Chicago, and well, you could see real good. You know they had. Oh, they have a glass of ceiling. Yeah, they had the upstairs. See, was kind of all glass. Had a lot of windows. Hey, you know what was downtown Beckley like? Like around 1948, bustle. Bustle, hustle, and bustle. Sidewalks were on Friday nights and Saturday nights. You couldn't, you couldn't walk. On the walks, you had to walk in the streets. Was there any crime with all that people? Not too much. No, is it? Is it more crime now than then? It certainly is. Did the, Did you lock the door when you first lived on Berkeley Street at night? Well, we always locked the doors, but uh, it, it not you didn't. You had didn't have to be as careful as you did now. Did you lock your car door though all the time? No. Uh -uh. Did you did you took take the leave the keys in the car? No, I never left the keys in the car. Some people did then. I never did. I either. never did. Even then. I don't know. Wonder why this how well how come that uh, people are more ornery now? I don't know. <laughs> You think the pro pro progress, they don't know how to handle it? It's too, too much, it's happened too fast? I don't know. Why? But there's more crime now. Well, I guess because of drugs. I think drugs has a lot to do with it. And that's because people have too much time on their hands, isn't it? Right. <laughs> how, did you have that much time to squander back? I bet you were too busy, weren't you? No. We didn't have too much time. We had to get in wood for the winter and summer. You we even had to have wood in the getting wood for the winter. You had to have wood in the summer for a cook stove too, didn't you? Yeah, and then, then for the uh, for the winter too. Did you not have electricity on Clyde Street? Uh yeah, the lights was on electricity. That's all? That's but all. You mean um so the stove and then Stove was a wood stove, coal stove. And what you have? Heaters was coal stoves. And uh, you were about radio. Well, I don't remember radio for a lot of years. <laughs> we didn't have a radio. Well, your dad probably couldn't understand that much English anyway. No. To listen to KDKA. But uh, later years, of course, I had a radio. Well, I know that was a different experience listening in, to it than watching it, because it was imagination, wasn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite radio show? J. Carol Nash? Yeah, J. Carol Nash, Bob Hope. What's Big your all-time favorite show? Bob Hope and Fibber McGee and Molly, Amos and Andy. Is it they true? were all good. Is it true that people used to... That it, what did Amos and Andy come on about seven in the evening? Yeah, they come on in the evening. Isn't it true that about that time that the streets would go quiet and every and everything would go dead outside because everybody would run in and take fifteen minutes to listen to Amos and Andy? Right. <laughs> and when Milton Burke came on in around nineteen fifty, did that happen then too? Yeah. On TV. Well, I'm sure that everybody did because it was something new. Or how about the night that Little Ricky was born? And I love Lucy. I bet there. I bet if you went to the supermarket that night, there wasn't anybody else. Probably not. Probably not. When did you get a TV? In nineteen, uh, around nineteen fifty. We just had one station. Where was that? WSAZ. Oh, Huntington. Mm -hmm. The only station we could get. Well, what did you have? An antenna on the roof. Not well. <laughs> yeah. I think as she, she a, as she gets older, she's maybe she's got a pose <laughs> on uh, on the roof that, and Huntington, and then then they got a WAY, then Bluefield. Did you have to go up there and adjust that thing? Well, when we just got Huntington, 
late, later, then we got one that was motorized. You mean that. for every station you had to change it to a different position? Yeah. But so it was motorized, but then we'd get, we got another one that was motorized. You had a switch in the house? Yeah, and, and you just turned it till you, till it was facing. So instead of just flipping the remote control on there, it just... You didn't it, have remote controls. <laughs> you, got, you got it. Well, I remember when you didn't have that, but you had to get up and change the channel, but then that wasn't it. Then, then you had to, from there you had to go and fine-tune it in. Yeah, fine-tune it in on the... Uh, but then we just got about three stations, though. So whereas right now changing the channel takes you about two seconds. Right. Back then it might take a whole minute just to to, to change it and get it in. Yeah, and then, and then turn your antenna around to pick it up. Well, I, what about when the uh, lightning storm came? Did that affect it? Well, it never, never affected ours. But I think it did affect some of them. Our leaves would get on it? I, well, we never had any problem with ours. Of course, we didn't have it that long. Why, they get cable? Then, they get, then we got cable. When Was that in the 60s? I think we got cable in the 60s. But back then, it was only channel 3 through 13. I remember that. Remember? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't It wasn't a 100 channels. No, it was just local. And you got that one out of Virginia. Remember, channel 7 was um, W... DBJ or something out yeah, of Roanoke? Yeah, right out of Roanoke. I remember that. And Channel 9 was religious, and Channel 11 was PBS. And we didn't have remote control. We had to get up and change it. I don't know. We didn't have remote control. Well, how, at what point did you start thinking you ought to open a restaurant? In the 50s. Well, you're... You were probably thinking about a couple of years before you actually did it, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you were working for somebody else at the Sportsman? No, I was part owner. You and Henry Bernard, was there a third party? Not then. Just you two? Just us two. Is it still on? Yeah, but I'll turn it off if you get...